Yeah. Okay, and now we're live. Hi, my awesome. name. Cool. <laughs> my name is Mike Huberty, and I'm the artist services manager. And this is. I'm Roy Elkins. I'm the founder of Broad Gym. Nice to talk to everybody. Yep. Thank you for uh, stopping by. The guys from Tinderbox Music right now um, are in a snowstorm in Minneapolis and working out. But as soon as they get back to their office, they're going to come online. Yeah, that's how they are out there. They can't handle the snow. And no. I mean, we're getting what six inches right now. Right, we're and not, we're not not even I, worried about it. I'm already about. driving. Anyway, yeah, we're right. at the Broad Gym headquarters in the conference room at Broad Gym right now. Uh, it's 4 p.m. Central Time. Yeah, if you're wondering where we are. No, the clock says 2:30. <laughs> it always it's always 2:30 around here. That's because Roy wants to keep us working. That's right. Uh, okay, well let's go in and uh, let me grab the link here and look at some of the, the questions we've had so far that we'd like to answer for people sure. um, for these specific things. And oh, a couple more just came in, but that's okay. We'll get to those in a second. Um, and these are, let me find the YouTube link here uh, from there. So why don't we talk a little bit about what they do with Tinderbox Music and, and our branch okay, and our, cool. our relationship with them. Um, so, uh, Tinderbox Music is a music services company based in Minneapolis, and what they'll do is they'll pitch songs. Um, they are like a conduit for songs that go right into a ton of MTV productions, uh, a ton of the Bonham Murray, the company that makes um, uh, the real world and keeping up with the Kardashians and a lot of the reality shows uh, that are out there. So that's kind of what Tinderbox is like the conduit for that. And so when they're looking for new music as that conduit, that's when they come to Broad Jam. Yeah. And they also, they're very strong in the um, college radio market, too. Absolutely. Yeah, so anything that comes to us uh, and then uh, that they pick, uh, they will push it to college radio, too, if, it, if they feel it's appropriate. Sure. I mean, there's a, um, there's a whole bunch of... Uh, Opportunity that you get with this particular yeah, yeah, listing, yeah. and so that's that's one of the reasons we wanted to bring them on because we've worked with them for several years yeah, now. Yeah. We've had hundreds of Broad Jam success stories, and uh, that's we want them to answer your questions directly. Okay, let me see if I can jump into these comments and start with. Okay, um, starting but this one is from uh, Adam Avery, a Broad oh, Jam great. artist. One of my Adam. favorite writers yes. on Broad Jam, and we've listened to a lot of awesome, Adam's right. songs. Um, and his number one question, or what is better, a few quality songs or a large catalog of good songs? Oh, I would I would definitely say um, I, I think there's two answers to that. I'll start out first of all. You got to have great songs. I mean, having a bunch of average songs is just not gonna not gonna cut it. You have to have great songs, uh, which we I think we all know that. But also from um, if you're prolific, it doesn't hurt to show that off either. So, uh, but I wouldn't pitch your average songs. You know, the folks on the other end want to hear great songs, and so I, I think it's better to spend a little extra time on that one song to make it a little mm -hmm. better than just cranking out song after song after song. And we hear that a lot too, where you know you can almost tell when somebody's just cranking out songs. You know, like they're just going through the motions of writing right. songs. It just doesn't have that energy and that uh, that time that it takes to write a great song and uh, and mix a great song. That, that's a, that's a couple of good points. He said he's have he said publishers tell him that his catalog isn't big enough. And and I'd say uh, well for that I mean that may be specifically for an admin deal or something like that where they want to take a cut and that's just promote possible. it. That's possible. Yeah. Uh, but if you know, I I, I don't know. God, I'd like to know if that's publishers we're working with. Right. Yeah, I would like to know if that's publishers we're working with. And Adam's probably watching this, so you yeah, can type so that in the email, comments. Uh, and Roy at Rajam and let me know that because uh, uh, we may not work with them much longer. Sure. <laughs> and if anybody so, wants to be invited yeah. and ask a question, I'm opening up the chat. Um, if anybody wants to be invited, um, then. If, if you've added us to your circles, the thing is, I mean, I've made this kind of public, so, I mean, so people can jump in, but if you've added us to your circles, like, um, throw on a, uh, like, throw on a YouTube comment or something like that, or send a quick email to mike at broadjam.com, and we'll, um, I'll invite you personally, yeah. you know, 
into it, but but we're taking everybody's comments. So I wouldn't say to worry too much about the catalog being big enough because we know mm -hmm. that definitely from the most of the publishers that I think that um, I've talked to and everything, and I deal with them every single day, um, is that what they want is something awesome, and they would be if they get that awesome song, that could be the record placement, that could be the fifty thousand dollar listing. You know, you know, there's you know, it, I I could understand why somebody would say that. Uh, because generally, if any of us look at our first 20 or 50 songs we, we, we've written in the past, we would look back on them and say, man, they suck. Right. I mean, oh, I sure. mean when I go back and listen to stuff uh, that I had, you know, when I was younger, uh, you know, uh, I look back and say, my God, are those 50 songs are maybe one keeper that I have to tweak. And so maybe a publisher is asking that question because they just want to see experience writing. We have a tendency to think that when we're first starting out that we're writing good stuff just by the mere fact that we completed it. Right. Because oh, sure. we don't really have a comparison to the rest of our catalog because we don't have one. But when you start getting 50 or 100 songs or 150 songs, uh, you know, I, I think that maybe that's the basis of that question because you know by the time you've written 100, 150 songs, you're probably a pretty good songwriter. That well, point. you know, I'd say two things here. Number one, you're probably a pretty good songwriter. Yeah. But uh, number two, I think that when you get to a certain point when you've recorded a lot and, and, and gone through the process a lot, you know the difference between good and great. And I think in this market, and this is something that... Um, we need to that we deal with every day yeah. is because we hear a lot of really good songs, but when you hear that great song, it's like it, the the world needs hits. Yeah, that's and right. that's such a cliche thing to say, but you, it's that fine tuning of your own ability because right. a lot of people can write good songs, but if it, it just takes that work, yeah, yeah, to make it great. Well, yeah, I heard um, heard or read heard Joe Walsh say or read that he said this one time. That he didn't feel he wrote a good song till he was he was well into a hundred songs. Now here's the guy that wrote the "Life's Been Good to Me So Far," right. which I believe <laughs> the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has dubbed the greatest rock song. That in is history, a classic. Like it is that. absolutely a classic. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I But uh, <laughs> I mean, here's a guy that we would look at and say, I don't think he can write any bad songs. But he's sitting there. Right. Like, I mean, I, you know, but that's an excellent question, Adam. I mean, yeah, that's, that's one that I think we could say or talk about for probably twenty minutes. Sure. Well, you know, I think to a, um, you know, I think about a interview I saw one time with the guy that wrote "Stop in the Name of Love." I mean, Lamont Dozier. Oh yeah, right, right. Right. He said he's like, well, you know, the how many songs do you think you've written? Oh, around ten thousand. Yeah. <laughs> sure, he's had like sixteen top ten hits or something. Yeah, like that. right, right. But remember, he's written ten thousand songs. Yeah. So. I would bet those hits that he wrote weren't the first songs. That no, he I, that I was probably yeah. into maybe two. By the time we get yeah. to two thousand, he's yeah. like, I got this one. And yeah. he said at Motown, they just would write every day. Yeah, like it would just be a bunch of guys writing every day to create something. Yeah. Right. I mean, and we wonder why they had those hits in the nineteen yeah. sixties. Because that's all they did. Yeah. That's that, all they and did. so they um, didn't have the internet to get in our way. And <laughs> right, they didn't have Facebook. Five hundred like, channels of TV to maybe, distract us. And, maybe I should see, you know, what my ex-girlfriend is doing. No, you should yeah, be writing a song unless right. your ex-girlfriend provides um, some inspiration that you might want to check it, like in the, on the phone, but actually write a song. With you. Next so, question. That's probably a good. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good probably a good segue. So, uh, Michael Buffalo said, "Is it a must?" And this is, I think, this is a good question. It's one we get all the time. Is it a must that music members submit? Must be professionally mastered. Uh, no, no, it's not. Now, uh, it doesn't hurt by by any means. In fact, one of the guys we recommend is uh, Craig Anderton, who is probably more known for his uh, uh, writing with electronic musician and keyboard and some yes. kind of Max. He's an excellent mastering engineer too. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be mastered. Um, but you have to; it has to be broadcast ready. Generally, for TV, I you know I don't think they're looking for mastered versions all the time. Some people do, some don't. Film, uh, they're going to remaster it anyhow. If it's a, a pitch to uh, publishing for uh, another artist, they're going to cut it. So, or, so they're going to re recut the song yeah. anyhow. So. It's not necessary, but you 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 got to have a good mix. I, I would say I would say that I would say having a good mix is the most important thing. Absolutely, more important than mastering because um, television is going to go through the TV. I mean, 
when you submit something to radio, that's when they're like, yeah. you know, make sure it's mastered because radio is it's listened to in a variety of different yeah. formats. Um, they have a certain standard for television. They have a certain standard for film. Like you said, yeah. in demos, it won't matter. Just make sure the mix, if the mix sounds great, yeah, you're you're clear. We've had, I think we've had plenty of things selected yeah. uh, for placement that haven't been professionally mastered. It's just an excellent mix, and it's loud enough. Yeah, I, I, I just this morning, um, a guy sent a note and said, "Would you check out uh, uh, some of my songs?" And I went to his list, and he and a great arranger. Great sound selection, great Hammond player, by the way, but the mixes just weren't there, and he he just needs to spend a little more time in the mix. Um, I think a good rule of thumb, and I've heard this off and on over the years, is about an hour on the mix per minute of the song. Yeah, maybe two hours. Now, if you're doing a record, that's probably more like three or four hours per song, maybe longer than that. But I think for film and TV, or for TV especially, probably about an hour. Yeah. yeah and, and you'll get there. But, I mean, the question is, when you listen to it or when your friends listen to it or anything like that, does it sound good? Yeah. You know, is everybody like, yeah. dude, this sound, if, you know, yeah. if, if it sounds good and you know that you're not – and I think the other thing is, is that – and this is something that I feel bad for sometimes. People make submissions and they make comments yeah. in the, and then they say like, well, if, but, you know, well, check out this song. Um, I had a cold that week. Yeah. Or right. I want you to check out this demo, and you know my finger was broken, so the yeah. guitar solo yeah. is slightly out of tune. Um, and I feel bad because your the songs you're up against are perfect. Yeah. So I mean I think the the rest of Michael Buffalo's question up is can you explain can you please explain in detail what is acceptable? I'd say your very best. That's right. Is, yeah. is you're going to want to send your very best every time. And if you send your very best and you know you listen to it and you're like, I can't. As artists, you know, we're never done. But when you hear it and you're like, yeah, yeah, this is good. Like you can't yeah. hear any particular flaw that, or you know. Get, you know, get some, the, the hardest thing with any, with any of us as we write is, you know, I, I think that every song I've ever worked on, I've ever written, I've ever produced, I can go back and, and tweak it a little. Absolutely. And when is that cutoff point when it is your absolute best? I don't know if you ever get to that point, but there is a cutoff point, and I think it's good and healthy to find some trusted friends that have good ears that can say, this is good. And that that's usually not spouses, uh, parents, uh, close friends, because you know they're not going to give you that kind of feedback. Um, unless they're in the music business, obviously, unless they uh, have sure. a vested interest in, in, in what's what's happening. Uh, but I, I I think that just really working that ex going that extra mile on a song makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm with you 100. percent And the thing is, uh, through Bra I mean, there's a free way to get that feedback just from random anonymous people on Broadgen. That's, right. Just That's use, right. Yeah. Use the peer review mechanism. Go in, write some reviews, and then other people will review your music. Yeah. And um, we've had a lot of people do that, and then you know, of course, it's the internet, and there's reviews, and yeah, right. you know, somebody's gonna say something mean or whatever. But most of the time, and you think most of the broadband community yeah. are honest, yeah, and they're yeah. interested, and they want it. They're like, I'm gonna do a good job because I want other people to do a good job for me. Um, Ninety-five percent of our reviews are are. Right. People were interested. You know, we, we're not immune to idiots either. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just, I, well, there's a few idiots the, on the site. But, the uh, internet is the, the internet is the internet. Yeah, but, it's it's the license for idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but here's another uh, uh, thought for you: is that if you're submitting a lot, or you've submitted, you know, x amount of times, and you're not having success, we do have pro reviewers on the site that are. You know, they're experts. Maybe, you know, maybe spend a little more on one of these reviewers and get some really good feedback from them, and maybe they can help you tweak some things I you think, know, uh, about pro, your process. You pro know. Reviewers is a, you know, is a really excellent example because Pro Reviewers, like you can ask somebody, and this is why, I mean, one of the reasons I'm excited about it is because, um, let's take John Stone, as one of the, the first guy that comes up with Pro Reviewers. Yeah. Um, now, his reviews aren't cheap. Absolutely. No, no, no. But if you would go to Los Angeles and take them out to lunch and have them listen to your song um, and then give you honest feedback on it, first of all, 
If you do that. If you would do that, like right. let's say you're his nephew, yeah, and then yeah. you can get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But for a regular guy, just getting yeah. a publisher with a great track, with a great track record. That's right. Well, yeah, and, and there's probably. I mean, he is. I mean, he's had hits with just about every major pop star and country star at one point or another. So, yeah. I mean, there's a guy that's going to tell you exactly what he thinks. So, I mean, j j right, John's yeah. a good, you know, John's a good example, and then we've got we've got other guys on the set too. Um, yeah. From jazz to, I mean, you think about Jason. Ma I mean, we got somebody on the site that can probably give you really right. detailed feedback. That's, right. that's an expert in the music industry, whether it's label side or publishing side. So, um, we can we can definitely help you out with that. And you you know, if you want to stick it, uh, uh, I can't I don't I can't do every review, but if you want to stick it on my comments page, um, you know, I'll give you my thoughts and. Um, so please do that. You know, if you if you want a little feedback, just tell me what song to listen to, and I'll post it right back on my comments page. Uh, another another quick question we got from Stack Trace. There's like an umlaut in there over. Oh, it's a double accent over the R. Okay, I think it's in Cyrillic. Like, I don't know <laughs> how to pronounce your name, Stack Trace. But if a writer is registered with a performance rights organization as a writer, is it necessary also to register as a publisher? Uh, absolutely. If you, uh, in, unless you have a publisher, obviously on that particular piece, but definitely register as a publisher because if you don't register as a publisher, you're only going to get half the royalty. So make sure that you're registered both as a writer and a publisher. Yep, absolutely. I mean, even if you have other publishers representing you as a non-exclusive, yeah. yeah. like you're gonna get stuff on your own. You're gonna get uh, oh, radio. For example. Yeah. Anytime, anytime you get something yeah. on your own, you're gonna want to get the music for that, unless it's an exclusive yeah. with a different publisher. But you know, I, I heard they were, they were looking into that. If uh, um, somebody told me this, and, I, and I'm not sure, so please don't don't take this uh, as the gospel, but uh, that if there wasn't a publisher listed on the song, uh, that they would change those rules and somehow it would be divvied up. But I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen there, and I'll check in. Yeah, that. I don't. <laughs> that sounds like magical thinking. I know, right? I know. And it's uh, uh, we're going to give this money away. Yeah, yeah. I can <laughs> I can show them an account. Put it in right, we have some ideas. Yeah. But, for uh, ASCAP and you, BMI, the uncollected publisher. The point is definitely uh, uh, form your publishing company. Uh, I'm a writer and uh, uh, an ASCAP or ASCAP writer and an ASCAP publisher as well. So uh, form your publishing company uh, along with your, uh, your your writers. Yep. No. And and I'd you know definitely do those things because companies like um, it's not just Radio Play, it's Pandora. If you're getting played on Pandora, yep. uh, make sure you have both of those things because that's two. Uh, that's double the checks you'll be getting even from Pandora or Internet Radio or any anything you go through. Yep. Um, just recommend it to do that. And then it's 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 not that expensive to set it up. Uh, you can do it quick. Okay. So those are some of our YouTube comments. Um, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna check on some of our um, email uh, that we've had before. Okay, this is from Nina. Nina, thank you for sending the yep, email. Thank you, Hi, my name's Nina, and I'm a songwriter. Yep. <laughs> that's not me, that's her. I write many styles from atonal compositions to rap. My question is, does a songwriter need to stick to one style of music in order to have a better chance at placement? That's a, that's a real good question. Yes, it is. Oh, did, did, is there something else to that? No, nope, that's, this, is, this is this particular question. Here, thank you, Nina. Here's uh, in, uh, perspective on that, whether it's right or wrong, you judge. You know, we get pitched a lot by artists that will say, or writers that will say, I can write in every genre. Well, my first thought is, in the history of uh, the music industry, nobody has ever been able to do that successfully. Not even the greatest writers in history write in every genre. So it isn't as much a, as whether you can write in every genre. It's how you pitch it. If you walk into somebody's office and say, you know, I can write in every genre, they're probably not going to believe you whether you can or not. So what I would do is uh, I would look at 